Mission Sunday Part 2. The next PowerPoint screen uh, shares with us that in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Am I in the way? I guess I am. You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. That's a command for all of us. Amen? This is a Christian command. And we're everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, across the street, at your marketplace, at the gas station, and to the ends of the earth. That's a call for us. And the word witness, as we talked about last week, is the Greek word martus, which means martyr. We're to die, be willing to die for Jesus. So there's two parts in dying, to Je- dying for Jesus. One, uh, somebody can say, well, if you don't recant your faith, uh, I'm going to shoot you. That's one way. Another way is die to yourself, to your own goals, to your own uh, self, your own wants, your own desires, and live for Christ alone 100%. That's another way we are martyred. And I pray that we'll all do that one. Amen? Amen. So, uh, it also says in Luke 9.23, I don't know if I put that one up. But we'll, yep, there it is. It says, uh, Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. In other words, if we go try to find ourselves, we're going to lose it. Because we are in Christ. That's the only place that we can be found. But if you give up your life for my sake, and another uh, gospel it says, and the gospel's sake, you will save it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you yourself are lost or destroyed, or your, or your life is not focused on the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a waste. Amen? So... Those two scriptures uh, are very, very powerful. So are you, the question is, are you willing to be a martyr for Jesus? Are you willing to give up all of your goals and dreams and wants and desires to do what God wants you to do, to do what Christ wants you to do? That's our question that we talked about last week. Now, Victoria's trip to Japan and Korea uh, was, was amazing. And, and I'm so thankful that we have a, a granddaughter whose heart is for the children and for the Lord. Amen? Now, uh, she did say some things that, that I want to clarify. And, and I talked to Victoria about it this past week. She mentioned that uh, uh, about forcing Scripture down people's throats. Now, we certainly don't want to do that. But we must understand that is the only way people are saved. When Before I was saved, pe- people would give me scripture, and I thought they were forcing it down my throat. But you know what they were doing? They were planting a seed. They were loving me. They were loving me, absolutely. They were loving me in spite of me. And that's what we have to understand. Unbelievers do not want to hear the word of God until they get saved. Then they say, oh, why did I resist in the first place? So scripture is extremely important. Extremely important. We must give people scripture. Because this scripture verse says, and this is why, the word of God is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than this sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and the spirit of a person. Between the joint and marrow. And it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Now, brothers and sisters, we have to understand, as the church, unbelievers can't judge us rightfully because they don't have spiritual discernment. I know, when I, before I was saved, I said, well, uh, they, they think they're holier than, than thou. But I was not in a place to judge the church, judge the people who were bringing me scripture, because it was, it's spiritually discerned. Do not be afraid to bring scripture to people. It is what saves them. Now, many people will reject it, but it is in their mind, and God will do with it what he wants to do with it. Amen? 
The, the second thing she talked about is, uh, she talked about relationships. Relationships, when you're witnessing, I, they're important. However, I would add to this. Relationships do not save anybody. My relationship with anybody doesn't save them. Uh, I have a friend who I've known since high school for 50 years. He's still not saved. He's still not saved. Relationships do not save. Uh, I have another friend uh, for over 25 years. He is not saved. But I'm not going to give up on them because the Lord's working in their life. Now, another thing, uh, it's, if you, it, it, we can't be in relationship with everybody we need to witness to. That's a fact. Because Jesus himself, when he met the woman at the well, he did not have a relationship with her, yet he proclaimed truth to her life. He spoke truth into her life. He spoke the word of God. The same thing with the woman who was caught in an adulterous affair. He didn't have a relationship with her, but he spoke truth into her life. Brothers and sisters, we are called to speak truth into people's lives, whether we know them well or not. Preferably, and we certainly don't want to uh, shove any, any of God's word down anybody's throat, because we don't cast our pearls before swine. That's what God says. Uh, if people don't want to hear it, oh, I'll stop. If I notice that people do not want to hear it anymore, if they say, well, I, I don't want to talk about that, fine. That's great. I won't talk about it. But we have to give people scripture. So I just wanted to clarify those things. Now, as we go on, um, God's word for today, our sponsored uh, Compassion International Children. Um, I bring this scripture to you. Proverbs 19.17 says, 19, says, If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. Amen? Amen. Brings tears to my eyes. Amen. God will repay when we help the poor. So, um, as we get ready, uh, brother, would you... Uh, yes. Uh, our our uh, children are in Ethiopia, Uganda, and Rwanda, right there. I just wanted to give you a visual of where our children are. And uh, if, brother, if you would go to uh, the Compassion International. And then scroll down. And then go to uh, the bottom one, uh, Blair. And I don't know how to pronounce that. Just click on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there, there he is. Um, so Blair uh, Tumu Himsby is, uh, is in, lives in Uganda. He's 11 years old. Uh, if you'll scroll down a little bit further, uh, we can take a look at some of his... Uh, Okay, go back up, brother, um, and click on uh, right at the top, Child Development Center. And I'm going to read the, uh, the second paragraph. The, the regional diet consists of maize, bananas, beans, cassava, plantains, rice, potatoes, peas, ground nuts, green vegetables. Common health problems in this area include malaria, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, uh, protein malnutrition. Most adults in Butogata are unemployed, but some of them work as subsistence farmers and earn an equivalent of $20 a month. <sighs> this community needs qualified teachers, tuition. This community uh, uh, needs assistance, employment opportunities, and income generating skills, training, and medical facilities. Your sponsorship allows our sponsorship, your sponsorship, uh, allows the staff at Butogata Child Development Center to provide your sponsored child with Bible studies, health screenings, medical care, hygiene, education, sports, games, skills, training, academic support, career guidance, home visits. The center will also provide meetings 
HIV AIDS and awareness programs, positive parenting seminars, and counseling for the parents or guardians, guardians of your small children. And I believe uh, Blair uh, is, is uh, I don't think he has a, a, a father or, or a mother. We can scroll down maybe and, and see uh, who his parents are. Uh, he usually gives a bio of, of the parents. Oh, they're married, but they're now separated by death. So he has only maybe one parent. Um, so in reading a, a letter from Blair, would one of you, would one of you like to read this letter? Who can read? Uh, I better read it. <laughs> okay. So here's from uh, from Blair. How are you, and how is life at home? Back to me. I'm okay. The reason why I have written letter is to inform you that on 10th September is my birthday. So I humbly request you to send me something and pray for me. For whatever I am doing. Me too. Pray for you in the name of God the Almighty to lead and guide you in whatever you are doing. Greetings to your friends, family, and relatives. I am happy and request that you send me your photos so as I can know more about you. Otherwise, in my future, I will be uh, a lawyer or a journalist because at school I'm in charge of information and entertainment as a, as a perfect as a per company. And then on September 7, 2015, I'll be going back to school for, for my studies and I wish you to send my pocket out money. Another thing, I would request you to pray for me in my P7 entrance of 2015 so I can be promoted to P7 next year. My favorite color is white because this color signifies the Holy Kingdom of God Almighty. Amen. My favorite subject is English because this subject makes me know more things. And my favorite game is soccer because soccer makes one physically fit and famous. Greetings <laughs> 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 to my family members and they wish you come and visit me. But one problem I, I have is that my grandma is and I wish you would continue to pray for her and my mother. Your friend, your friendly Blair. Isn't that sweet? Amen. So we are making an impact on these on these children's lives, and so uh, at, at the at the end of the service, uh, I want to go out and take a picture so we can send it to all of our children. Uh, the next one, brother, if you scroll down or go arrow back, I guess. Pueblo Seven. I was hoping we didn't have to keep doing this. We may not get through all of them. So yeah, uh, scroll down, all the way down. Yeah, there. So, okay, this is Kazagaba Samuel, and he is in, uh, I believe, Rwanda. And he'll be eight on January 7, 2017. Let's see. There's a picture of what his village might look like, and uh, if you go down a little bit further, it'll it'll give you know too far. Uh, we can see some of the other pictures of what what his village looks like. Okay, now uh, go to the Child Development Center. And the, again, the regional diet consists of maize, beans, bananas, cassava. A common health problem in the area is malaria. Most adults are unemployed, but some work as day laborers, subsistence farmers, or in domestic services and earn equivalent of $18 a month. This community needs tuition, assistance, scholastic materials, tutoring, drinking water. Your sponsorship allows the staff of Iglesia de Aspotres uh, of Jesus Christ to provide your sponsored child with Bible teaching, health screenings, nutritious food, hygiene, education, 
games, competitions, field trips, serving op opportunities, scholastic material, tutoring, vocational training, English, English classes, and counseling. The center staff will also provide the child development training and meetings for the parents or guardians of your sponsored children. Amen? Now, here's a letter from, from, from Kazagaba. It says, Dear Emmanuel Church of Edgewater, Samuel greets you in the name of Jesus. He is, I don't understand what he says, as his family, he was promoted to primary three. Samuel likes to play football, praying, football and then praying, okay? <laughs> and he likes sports and he likes to help his parents in home activities. He's harvesting season here. And we thank God that we are starting well a new year. Thank you for, for your good work you have done. May, may God bless you and we wish you a happy new year. Amen? Amen. So we're, we're definitely impacting these precious children. All right, let's go to the next one. Yumatoni Pauline. She's uh, going to be nine in January, and uh, she's from Rwanda. And uh, we can scroll down to the Child Development Center. Uh, again, maize, beans, sweet potatoes, bananas, most adults in Ntugamo work as day laborers, subsistence farmers, or in domestic services and earn $30 a month. Uh, your sponsor allows the staff of MMR Tugamo Student Center to provide your child, sponsor child, with Bible teaching, health, hygiene, education, supplemental food, health screening, sports, talent development, music classes, life skills, mentoring programs, tutoring, and educational assistance. In most countries outside of America and other countries like like us, you have to pay for your education. You don't you don't get it free. So uh, let me read a, a letter from Yumatomi. Dear Emmanuel Church of Edgewater, greet you much in the name of Jesus. I am doing well with my family. I am studying well, although my grandmother is sick, but I believe that she will get well. I have been in holidays of Christmas and New Year. I love that, that time of year to help my grandmother. I wish you good, happy New Year. Amen? Okay, next one, brother. Yuwasi. Now, Yuwasi is a little bit older. She's going to be 19 in, in a few days. She's from Rwanda. So if you go to the Child Development Center... Again, the regional diet is maize, bananas, beans, cassava, sweet potatoes, common health problems in Syria include malaria, worms. Yeah. Most adults in Muhara are employed, but some work as day laborers and earn the equivalent of $4 a month. The community needs job opportunities, suitable land for farming, scholastic materials, and tuition. So when we send $38 a month, that's nine times what they normally get more than nine times. Praise God that we can help them. Not only does it help them, the children, it helps their families and it helps their community. So we thank God for that opportunity. Uh, your sponsorship allows staff of Muhara Student Center to again provide your student with praise the Lord, Bible teaching, and again all those uh, medical exams, nutritious food, hygiene, and those things that we all take for granted, right? So let me read a, a letter from uh, Uwasi. Emmanuel Church of Edgewater, my beloved parent. <coughs> Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am doing well with my family and we are healthy. We are currently harvesting beans as well as planting sorghum. In which season are you? We had a wonderful festive season. We also started the new year, 2016 well. How have you been? Please pray for me. <coughs> be able to get good grace, may peace, blessing, and protection of the Lord continue to be with you through whatever 
you are going to have a wonderful uh, stay. Amen? Oh, the other thing. Have a wonderful stay. So, um, all right. Now let's let's uh, now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to change the sponsor. These these those are the four children that we sponsor as a church. Now I personally sponsor. We're gonna have to go. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to log out and then log back in. Yeah, there it is. Log out. Yeah. And uh, and and our, our my, the Borella family sponsors three three children. And uh, so put in Norm Borella. And then, uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, uh, no, well, let's go save her for last. Go back. To either one of those, uh, Mitsuki or Abdissa. Abdissa. Now, Abdissa, he he lives in, I believe, Ethiopia. Yeah, Ethiopia, and he'll be 15 in September 21st. Uh, he's 14 years old right now, and uh, we can show a picture of what his village looks like. Isn't that awesome? They're they're praying to the Lord Jesus. how excited they are to be in school. <laughs> okay, now if we go to the Child Development Center. Um, the, the regional diet, again, consists of beans and teff grain. How would you like to eat beans and teff grain every meal, every day, every week, every year, every month, every year? I mean, they don't have Mexican food, Italian food, Vietnamese food. They have beans and teff. <laughs> Most adults in Gojo work as day laborers and earn the equivalent of $23 a month. This community has electricity and water, but needs vocational training centers, income generating activities, and libraries. Your sponsorship allows the staff of Gojo MYC Student Center to provide your sponsored child with choir, Bible study groups, health screenings, clothes, shoes, sports, field trips, scholastic materials, tutoring, and health and nutrition education. The center also will staff and provide counseling and opportunities for, the, for project development for the parents or guardian of the sponsored child. Isn't that amazing that all that can be done and we can be a part of it? So at this, let's see if I have a letter from him. Brother Fred, I was going to, oh, you can't talk, can you? I was going to have Brother Fred read. Brother Fred sponsors a, a, a child that he has a laryngitis today. <laughs> so, okay, here's a letter from Odessa. How are you, my beloved sponsor? How is work? My family and I are all right. Praise the Lord. I am doing good at school. I attend tutorial class. Our perfect, encourage us, I don't know what it says, encourage us to succeed at school. I recently went a trip with my sponsored children friends to Addis Abiba and visited a zoo. I saw lions and I enjoyed Easter with songs, drama, and hearing the Lord's. I don't know what that says. The Lord's, God's at church. On that day, we had holiday meal. Bye for now. Praise the Lord that we can impact these precious children. Uh, next one, brother. Oh, Is Mitikyu. Now, Mitikyu, he's a... Uh, He's six years old, I think, and he's from Ethiopia. Yes, and uh, I don't know if I have a. If we, if we uh, scroll down to to his his village, it takes a while for it to come up.
There's his, what his village looks like. Seems like to me, we take a lot of things for granted, right? So in, in going to um, the Child Development Center, again, the regional diet consists of bread and injera. Bread and injera every day. And you're happy to have it. Amen? Uh, common health problems in Syria include malaria, parasitic diseases. Most adults in Gohatsian work as day laborers and earn a equivalent of $20 a month. This community has electricity, telephone service, but needs vocational training centers, tuition assistance, employment opportunities, and recreation centers. Your sponsorship allows the staff of Gohatsian Berhaini Wongo Church Student Center to provide your sponsor child with Bible teaching, health screenings, medical treatment, field trips, health education, tutoring, educational materials, and school fees. The center will also provide opportunities for project involvement for, for the parents or guardians of the sponsor children. Isn't that amazing? Uh, the last one we have is Angelica. I don't have a letter from her but she's going to be nine in October. And uh, she lives uh, in Colombia. We have a, well, you all know where Colombia is in South America. It's right where South of, of Central America <coughs> makes, uh, connects with uh, South America. And Colombia is right there. Uh, let's go down. Well, you can play that, but I, it's hard to understand. You can go ahead and play it. She speaks in Spanish, so I, I don't understand it. Isn't she cute? Uh, if you go down to the next one, brother, um, this is a, uh, yeah, you can play, you can play that. Hello sponsors, welcome to Cordoba, Colombia. This is Project CO742. In a place like this, beautiful children like my friend Camila Andrea here receive all the help they need to escape from poverty in Jesus' name. The Compassion Project provides the school reinforcement. It also provides nutritious meals and snacks. And the children have the opportunity to join hundreds of friends while they learn and play in a safe environment. And they can also have access to medical services if they need it. But the most important thing is that the children listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ and they experience his love. Every single one of the Compassion Projects is established in a local church in which the kind and Christian staff helps our children to grow in every aspect. These opportunities to change their life exist thanks to sponsors like you and your faithfulness. Thanks again for sponsoring this beautiful tree. May God bless you. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that awesome? Now, uh, yeah. Now, here's the one I want. I really want you to see. This is a tour of her home. Hello, my name is Roberto. I work for Compassion Colombia, and here I am with my little friend Angelica Zapata, and she's going to show us her house. Okay. And she's going to do, introduce us her family. Is it? It's her father. It's her grandmother and her brother. And now she's going to show us her kitchen. This is her kitchen, where, she, where they cook the food. Okay? And now she's going to show us her bedroom. And this is her bed, where she sleeps. Ciao, Palino. Bye, Porter. Isn't that sweet? So then I'm going to read a, a letter from, from one of the directors uh, it says uh, I am I am Miss Sima Babra Katabazi I am the project director of Child Development Center attended by your sponsor child at the All Saints Church Botugata 
Kim D. Kim Kaizi in southwestern Uganda. The center is found near the famous Bawadi impenetrable pen forest known for mountain gorillas. Thank you for sponsoring Blair. The center has a total of 230 children in age groups of 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 11. The children are inquisitive, learn very fast, and model whatever comes their way. They need good role models, and I'm sure they have found these in child development set workers at the center. The incredible behavior, spiritual, and social e emotional changes among these children are a clear testimony. One boy registered when he had jiggers. His, his mother is mentally unwell. Because of Compassion International, he is now very clean and completely healed. We are praying for complete recovery of his mother who has already been put on treatment. Water has, was a big challenge at the center. With contemporary international funds, we received a water tank. We now can provide clean water to the center and surrounding community. This is a blessing from God. Thanks to uh, complimentary intervention gift, we have been able to assist families with HIV AIDS, afflicted children, and or caregivers. We are able to provide medical care and home medical products to these families. I'm ready to express our gratitude and appreciation as a center for the love and continued support of our sponsors, both the sponsored children and the caregivers. Indeed, the sponsored children, caregivers, and the community have benefited greatly from Compassion International. The children have access to education and have been provided with school materials and school fees. They also get spiritual opportunities, and this has led to their holistic development. The children are always thrilled when they receive letters from the sponsors. The children who don't receive letters cry and feel out of place. It takes effort to assure them that they too are loved. I pray all the sponsors find time to write to their children. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to serve him in the children's ministry. I pray that God will give me the grace to continue to serve him in this ministry. I realize that God uses people like our sponsors to do his work even when they are far away from the children they support. The aspect that has had the most impact is the cognitive. Is the cognitive. Children who would otherwise not go to school have at least acquired a basic education. A number of them confess Christ as Lord and Savior and have steadily grown in self-esteem. They are choosing great, they are choosing good health practices during home visits and through health training conducted regularly for the caregivers and children. They have been noticed, there has been noticeable improvement in health and hygiene of both children and their parents. They, there were children suffering from jitters, but because of sponsor support, they are now very clean and smart. I give glory to God because of his tremendous change realized through sponsorship. May God bless the sponsors as they bless his children. Keep praying for us, our children, and the entire church, that the word of God will continue to transform the lives of our people. Please pray that we will find a way of dealing with the HIV AIDS scourge. Pray that the community embraces the issue of food security. Thanks again for sponsoring Blair. I pray that God will continue to bless you, yours in Christ. Nisina Barbara Katik Bazi. Amen? It's, it's, up, it, it's You're making a change in these people, in these children's lives. They are pretty much without hope unless people like you and I uh, help them and, and, and send them uh, not only money, but, but send them letters to let them know that, that we care about them and we love them. So right now, uh, I don't have anything else except for uh, one scripture as we close. And that scripture says, uh, when Jesus, uh, when the parents were starting to bring the children to Jesus, uh, the disciples would say, no, don't bother him. He doesn't want to uh, hang out with the children. And he, gave, he became very displeased. He said, no, let the children come to me. So that he could bless them, pray for them, and uh, he says, unless a person does come, the, unless a person comes to the kingdom of God like a child, he will not be involved in the kingdom of God. Amen. So uh, God loves His little children, and thank you, thank you for being forgiving and supporting and writing letters to support these children. So I like to go outside right now, gather real quickly in front of the garden out there, 
I'm going to take a picture with my phone, and then I'll, I'll have it printed out, and we're going to uh, send it to all of our all, all of our children. Amen? Amen. I hope you're blessed and encouraged and realize you're doing a great work. May we continue to do that. Amen.